Hey everybody. Today we're talking about goodness of fit testing using the chi-squared distribution. Suppose we have some categorical variable, like the year of college students in statistics classes at a large university. And suppose we're told it has a particular distribution, like this one. 50% freshman, 30% sophomore, 10% junior, and 10% senior. How can we test a claim like this just using sample data? To say this slightly differently, how can we test how good a fit this distribution is to some given set of sample data? For instance, suppose we obtain a simple random sample of size 65, 65 random college students from this university, and suppose that we find 28 freshmen, 24 sophomores, 9 juniors, and 4 seniors. So obviously this data doesn't adhere exactly to that distribution in that first table. But are those differences just due to random chance, or are they statistically significant? In order to make a decision between those two possibilities, we're going to start by setting up a null and alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis in a situation like this is just that the population of all students in statistics classes has the claimed distribution, 50% freshmen, 30% sophomores, and so on. And the alternative hypothesis is just going to be that the distribution is different. In order to test between those two hypotheses, we're going to compare the values that we actually observed from our sample data with the ones we would expect if the null hypothesis were true. Let's let O be the observed counts in these different cells in our table, and let's let E be the counts that we would expect if the null hypothesis were true. We're going to compute a test statistic chi-squared is the sum of O minus E squared over E. Now, if the null hypothesis is true, this test statistic has a chi-squared distribution with k, with k minus 1 degrees of freedom, where k is the number of um, categories. So in this case, we have four categories. k is 4, so we're in the distribution chi-squared of 3. Now, if we get a larger test statistic, that's going to indicate that our sample data is less compatible with the null hypothesis, that is, with the hypothesized distribution. So the first thing we need to do in order to run the significance test, in order to compute chi-squared, is to compute the counts that we would expect under the null hypothesis, that the population of all students in stats classes at this college has this breakdown. So we take the sample size of n equals 65, and multiply it by these different percentages. Our expected cell counts are 32.5, 19.5, 6.5, 6.5, 6.5. Now we can compute our test statistic chi-squared. We take the observed value minus the expected value for each cell, square it, and divide by the expected count. Add all those up for all the different categories, and we get 3.58. This is our test statistic. Remember, this is measuring how far away our sample data is from what we would expect if the null hypothesis were true. Larger values of chi-squared, roughly speaking, indicate that the data is less compatible with that null hypothesis. Let's be more specific. Let's be more mathematical. We want to find the probability of randomly getting a value in chi-squared of k minus 1 greater than or equal to the one that we actually got. And there's many ways of computing a probability like that. You can do it using a table or a TI calculator, for example. I, of course, recommend R. And in R, the command that you're going to be using is p chi squared. That's the cumulative distribution function for the chi squared distribution. That means it's going to give you back the probability of random, randomly getting a value less than or equal to the one you specify. In order to get greater than, we need to subtract from 1. So the command we're needing is 1 minus p chi squared of 3.58, that's the chi squared that we got, comma 3. So 3 is the number of degrees of freedom here. In this case, the result is about 0.31. That's a pretty high p value. So this data does not provide good evidence against the null hypothesis that the data comes from the claimed distribution. Sometimes we say that this, uh, sometimes in a situation like this, we say that the data is compatible with a hypothesized distribution. One word of warning, a large p-value does not prove the null hypothesis. It just, represent, it just indicates that you have a lack of evidence against 
that null hypothesis. Let's close with a few words about when it's appropriate to use a chi-squared goodness of fit test. First of all, you should be looking at a categorical variable. If you have quantitative variables, a quantitative variable, you can sometimes make it categorical in a useful way just by sorting it into bins. One way or another, chi-squared goodness of fit tests deal with categorical variables. Next, your data should be obtained by simple random sampling. This is um, a fundamental assumption of most introductory statistics um, hypothesis tests that we see. Finally, and most notable, your expected cell counts should be at least five. At least most of them should be. If many bins are likely to be nearly empty, then the chi-squared test statistic is not going to give you, or is less likely to give you, an accurate measure of goodness of fit. And you are going to need another method for testing your null hypothesis. For example, um, a Fisher exact test in some situations.